This is the Low Budget Review Show, and I'm your host, Eric Smith. Uh, today, I want to talk about a book. Uh, it's an older book, but it was recently made into a movie. <clears throat> excuse me, uh, that I believe had limited theatrical release. Uh, it's been on demand. Not sure if it's still on demand. I have not seen the movie yet, uh, but I've read the book a number of times, and that is. Cold in July by Joe R. Lansdale. Uh, this copy is from 1995. So Joe Lansdale, one of my favorite authors. Uh, I said that about a few authors on, on my reviews. Uh, but Mr. Lansdale is easily top three. Um... I can't imagine him never being in the top three. Uh, most likely, I'd put him at number one. Uh, he's just fantastic. And Cold in July is one of my favorite of his books. As I said, I've read it several times. Um, <clears throat> so what this book is about is uh, you have a gentleman by the name of Richard Dane, family man. He's got a wife and a kid. Uh, he's a picture framer, uh, which is something I did for a long time, 10 years. Uh, anyway, normal Joe. Uh, one night, someone breaks into his house and uh, Dane ends up shooting and killing the burglar. Um, cops come, tell him it was obviously self-defense, blah, blah, blah. They say the burglar was so-and-so. Um, get on with your life. Well, the dead burglar's father is an ex-con who was just released from prison. And he comes after Dane. And things get a little crazy. Uh, this is one of those books I can't say too much about the plot. Um, because it's going to spoil it. But uh, I will say that, uh, you know, it sounds... From what I've said, I think you might just think it's a simple revenge survival story. Um, but it is so much more than that. Um, as I said, Joe Lansdale is one of my favorite authors, and uh, there are many, many reasons for that. Um, <clears throat> his writing is just amazing. Uh, I, I like to say he's a natural-born storyteller, uh, but I don't know if that's actually true. He may have uh, slaved to to hone his craft. Um, it just just reading the stories, it it feels like there's a natural flow that that would come from someone who just has this ability to tell these stories. I, I can imagine him. Uh, or I can imagine sitting around a campfire, just having him spin a yarn, as they say. Um, so there's just this, this lyrical flow to the way he writes. Um, so that's one of the reasons uh, that I love him as an author, and that I love this book uh, that has hidden depths. Um, and it's really... Uh, yeah, there's a lot of action. Well... I shouldn't say a lot of action. There's action. There's suspense. It's it's a novel of suspense, as you can see on there. Um, there are twists and turns and surprises. But what this book really is, is a story of fathers and sons. Um, and I'm not digging deeply for that. Uh, part one is called Sons. Part two is called Fathers. And part three is Father and Son, I think. So, I mean, it's right there in black and white. Um, and that's, again, that's really what this is about. Um, Richard Dane is a father. He has a four-year-old son. Uh, and uh, there's a lot about uh, his relationship with his father. And then, of course, you have the ex-con, excuse me, who is, uh, just double-checking here, Ben Russell, um, who, obviously, the father of 
the person that Dane shot and killed. Um, so you've got that going on, and uh, he talks a lot about um, not being a great father, not being there. I mean, he's been in jail for 20 years? Long time he's been in jail, so he's he wasn't around to see his son grow up. And um, <clears throat> Part of the reason, I think, that he goes after... Um, he goes after Dane, not just because Dane killed his son, but because Dane took away his opportunity to reconnect with his son. Um, so, I mean, there's 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 a depth to it, but it's not. Um, it, it doesn't bog you down. Again, the writing just flows. Um, another one of the things I love about Lansdale is his characters and his dialogue. Uh, I've said uh, to many people when I'm talking about Lansdale, uh, he could write a novel, 400, 500 page novel, that's just people sitting around talking and I would read it. Um, his dialogue is just amazing. And the thing is, it it sounds like people having a simple conversation, but again, it's deeper than that. Um, and you you don't have to analyze it. I, I I've mentioned in other videos, I'm not one for for deeply analyzing the books that I've read, and um, you don't have to do that. It there are layers but they're not hidden layers I suppose uh, is the best way to put it um, it's 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 there for you to see as long as your your eyes are open <clears throat> excuse me and uh, uh, this is a it's not a thick book I read this I, I just reread it to do this review because it had been quite a long time um, and I wanted to refresh my memory and I read it in one day um, <clears throat> not quite one sitting I took a few breaks uh, and actually it's a good thing I did reread it although uh, it's not something I'm going to talk specifics about but I misremembered the ending um, if, if someone had asked me the day before I picked this up and reread it about the ending, I would have told them one thing and been completely wrong. Um, so, that's uh, a problem with age. <laughs> and having read so many things, I think stuff starts to run together. Uh, um, yeah, I had the, well, not completely wrong, but there was a pretty good thing that I kind of got mixed up. Um, and again, I really can't talk about specifics beyond that setup that I gave you because, uh, like I said, there are a lot of twists and turns. Um, but uh, fantastic characters, Dane uh, and his and his wife and his kid are are real average characters. Uh, <clears throat> there's a private detective in this that is a a character with a capital C. Um, just incredibly entertaining. Uh, but again, someone with, with more depth um, than one might realize when they first encounter this character. Um, and I did mention that uh, this was made into a movie, which is why I'm reviewing it now. And uh, so, uh, Michael... C. Hall. I almost said Dexter C. Hall because he's the guy that played Dexter. Uh, Michael C. Hall plays um, Richard Dane. And then um, it's got uh, Sam Shepard and Don Johnson. I believe... Now I haven't seen it yet. I believe Sam Shepard plays... Ben Russell, the ex-con, and Don John Don Johnson plays the private detective. I could have those switched. 
Um, but I think that's the case. Um, I'm going to put a link. Uh, I'm going to, well, I'm going to try and find the uh, trailer for the movie on YouTube. Uh, and if I can, if I find it, I'll put a link for the trailer down below. As well as there's a new edition of the book. Uh, so I'll put a link for that. That'll be all be in the description below. Um, <clears throat> so once I find the trailer, I'll know uh, who plays whom. I can't wait to see this movie. Um, Joe Lansdale this should be a household name. Um, uh, the man, like I said, he's just. I could gush and gush about his writing. Um, I'm just looking right over here on the shelf to my Joe Lansdale books. Um, he's got a series with uh, two characters, Hap and Leonard. And those two guys, I easily could read a book of just those guys sitting around talking. Um, they're fantastic. Love the Hap and Leonard books. But he writes uh, mysteries, suspense, horror, um, He's written uh, comic books. Uh, he wrote some Jonah Hex. Uh, wrote a Lone Ranger comic. Um, he wrote a Batman novel. Uh, his short stories are fantastic. Um, uh, one of his short stories, An Incident on and Off a Mountain Road, uh, was made into an episode of Masters of Horror. And his story, Bubba Hotep, uh, was made into a movie starring Bruce Campbell as Elvis in an old folks' home. Um, <clears throat> both very entertaining. Um, and uh, so now we've got Cold in July. And um, uh, just, I don't know... I, He's an award winner, and I don't know why he's not as, well, does the average Joe know who I was going to say, why he's not as well known as, like, Elmore Leonard, um, or Stephen King, to go with a different genre, but again, he does write horror, uh, but is, is Elmore Leonard a household name? Uh, I think people know him from certain movies <clears throat> maybe from justified but um, I don't know there's a lot of authors I think of as household names because you know I'm an avid reader but Joe Lansdale should be everybody should know who this guy is everybody should be reading his books um, they're fantastic there's something I think for everyone uh, his coming-of-age tale uh, is amazing. He's written a, a steampunk multi-genre mashup um, with... Uh-oh, here comes one of the cats. Uh, I mean, it's, it's got Frankenstein's monster and samurai and zeppelins and uh, gunfighters um, and... Uh, yeah, just... Just an amazing author, uh, Cold in July, an amazing early, early work. Um, I think the original publication is. I looked at this before. Uh, looks like '89 is the original copyright. Uh, not sure where it falls in his early works. I know he had at least uh, a few novels before this. I believe. I shouldn't say I know. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, if you just want to read an amazing, you can just read it for the great, okay, all right, kitty, um, you can just read it for the great writing, for the, the twisting, turning suspense story, you can read it for that, that bit of extra depth that's in there, um, sort of a, again, a treatise on fathers and sons, um, it's just... Uh, it's fantastic. You should read anything by Joe Lansdale, but this is the one I'm reviewing now. Uh, can't wait to see the movie. I... Whew, it's always tough with something like this to say
say whether you should read the book first or or watch the movie first. I always say read the book first. Um, trying to keep the cat out of out of sight, keep him from rubbing against the the camera. Um, I always say read the book first. Yeah, it's you're going to know the story then when you go and see the movie. But, um, hey, for all I know, they've made some changes to the movie. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. <clears throat> but I don't think it spoils uh, your enjoyment of a movie um, if you've read the book first and you already know where the story's going to go. As long as it's a good movie. I mean, if it's a, <laughs> it's a bad movie. I'm not talking about this one. I'm talking in general. If you have a bad adaptation, then it's a it's a bad movie. But uh, actually, the guys that uh, made this movie, um, I believe, are the guys that made Mulberry Street, which is a really good flick, and Stakeland, um, which I have not seen. Um, it's just one of those I've always wanted to see, but just haven't gotten to it. Uh, but I really liked Mulberry Street, and... Um, and I hear good things about Stakeland, uh, so I have faith uh, that they they could do a good job with this. Um, so that's it. One of my favorite authors ever. I'll read anything this guy writes. Uh, one of my favorite books by that author. Um, Cold in July. <clears throat> Pick it up. I love these covers. Um, this is by Mysterious Press, and they did. Excuse me. They published uh, a few of quite a few of his books, and and went with covers sort of in this vein. Um, and I like those. I like that look. Um, so there you have it. If you have any, as always, any questions, comments, or corrections, uh, like if I got the actors and their roles mixed up, or if I'm wrong about who, okay, the cat is on my sign now, um, if I'm wrong about who made this movie, I don't think I am, but I could be, uh, anyway, comments, questions, or corrections, please, uh, put them in the comments below, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, read more books.